Grow bags with injection ports are expensive. They average around four to six times the cost of regular bags for that little bit of rubber. Injection ports allow the safe injection of a liquid culture or spores into a sterile environment of grain or substrate. The needle pierces the port, usually rubber or silicon, tearing a channel through it. The needle keeps the channel open and creates a perfect seal around itself. Once finished injecting, the needle is withdrawn and the elastic nature of the material means the channel closes up as it withdraws. Unless the mycelium in the liquid culture is incredibly thick and old, you can usually draw it and inject it with a 22 gauge needle with very few issues. This is aided by using a stirrer to break up the clumps of mycelium before you draw and inject. Putting injection ports onto bags is much more of a head scratcher. Since you don't have a solid surface to bond to, the ports must be flexible enough to move with the bag while maintaining a grip on the thin plastic without coming loose and exposing the sterile substrate or grain to an unsterile environment. This is often a bigger issue with bags. As they move around, they create positive and negative pressure through the tiniest of holes, potentially sucking in contamination. The easiest method is to put a strip of micropore tape on the bag, inject through it, and then seal it with another layer of tape. Another common method is to cut a small hole in the bag about one quarter to one third of the way up. Then, using some RTV silicon, you apply a dab to both sides. Once this sets up, it creates a seal. This method isn't the best, as the silicon doesn't grip very well on shiny surfaces. Lightly keying the plastic with a 600 grit sandpaper gives the silicon more to grip on. There's a great video by Willy Myko making these bags, and it's well worth watching. However, this method is at risk from breaking, as the little stem that goes through the bag is the weakest part. Dropping, mixing, or knocking the bag can cause these to come off easily. It also means having to wait 24 to 36 hours for the silicon to go off each time before you use these bags. Another commonly used method is gluing on a trimmed down butyl injection port like the one I set on my shop. You glue this down with a high temperature epoxy and then overseal with tape. However, different glues melt at different temperatures so the injection ports can slide around during the sterilizing cycle. You can always add the injection port after sterilizing. Just be mindful that the ports and the site is cleaned with isopropyl alcohol there are also methods like peel and stick on injection ports sold by Shroom Supply. However, I'm convinced this is just a sheet of rubber furniture feet oversealed with duct tape. Now onto my method. I got an M10 pottery nipple which comes with a pre-drilled bore and a nut. I keyed the bore with some 240 grit sandpaper to give the silicone more to adhere to. Next, I placed the nipple bottom on some paper and squirted some silicone in until it came out of the top. With the bottom still pressed against the paper, I wetted my finger with some soapy water and smoothed the silicon out until it was slightly recessed into the nut face. After 24 hours, I put the nut on the thread all the way to the top and left one or two threads exposed before cutting below them. Leaving the nipple too long may cause leverage to potentially damage the bag as the grains are jostled around. Though I don't think this is as big of an issue as I initially thought, especially if you're using high quality grain bags. If you want to use some washers to increase the mating surfaces and thus clamping force, be sure to leave adequate threads exposed before cutting. Next, unscrew the nut and file or sand the cut faces smooth so they minimize the chance of tearing the bag. You can use any size bag really, but I've got some 10 tees lying around. Punch, cut or burn a hole in the bag around seven millimeters in size. I'm using a 9 second hollow punch. It's wise to make sure the hole is smaller than the outer diameter of the threads. That way they'll catch more threads and fill them with plastic, creating an even tighter seal. Pass the body portion of the injection port through the hole in the bag and secure it hand tight with the nut. Easy peasy. You now have a solid, reusable, autoclave safe bag injection port. You won't need to wait 24 hours each time you want to use one of these bags, nor do you have to worry about knocking this port off. Simply hold the injection port, inject through it and go about your business. Once you're finished with the bag, simply unscrew the injection port and repeat the process with a new bag. Cheers for watching.